Coach Neil Brown and the Troy Trojans look to keep pace in the conference race as we welcome you to Veterans Memorial Stadium in Troy, Alabama for Sunbelt Conference football today. It's the 0-6 Georgia Southern Eagles taking on the 5-2 Troy Trojans. A look at the Sunbelt standings. App State and Arkansas State, the remaining unbeaten. With a win today, Troy would move back into a third place tie with Georgia State. Georgia Southern at the bottom, winless overall and still looking obviously for that first conference win as well. And good afternoon, I'm Matt Stewart, joined by former Vandy quarterback and longtime college football head coach and athletic director Watson Brown and Watson. This Troy team coming off a bounce back win last week at Georgia State, but Georgia Southern 0-6, first time since 1941. They've started the season with six consecutive losses. On Sunday, they fired head coach Tyson Summers. They replaced him with Chad Lunsford on an interim basis. How does that coaching change impact the Eagles today? Well, I think it does. I think they've got the right guy in Chad. He's been with the program a long time. I think he's got his hands full, but I think he's excited about it. I think he thinks he can turn this around start winning some games and it starts with one of their arch rivals today in the Troy Trojans. Now for Troy, despite a win at LSU a month ago, the offense still not working to coach Neil Brown's liking, but Brandon Silvers is coming off one of his best games of the season. Brandon Silvers is a good football player. He's been here a long time. He totally understands this offense. Very good runner, very good thrower. Played one of his better games last week. I think he's at his best. He just gets the ball to all of these guys. He's got a lot of good players around him. They need him to play well today to win. It's the Trojans and the Eagles. Troy with the number one defense in the conference going up against Georgia Southern's spread option offense. Opening kickoff is coming up next. Back at Larry Blakeney Field, Veterans Memorial Stadium, just about set for the opening kickoff. Trojans will get the ball first, dressed in their Cardinal jerseys, trimmed in silver and white. The Eagles in their home whites, or road whites, pardon me, trimmed in blue. Chad Lunsford says this is a new season, new start. That's been the message to his team this week after taking over Sunday on an interim basis. Eagles coming off an embarrassing 55-20 loss at UMass last Saturday, the last game for Tyson Summers as the head coach. And Neil Brown in his third season, he's gone 15-5 since that first season of 4-8. and eight. He's 19-13 overall. And they're excited to be back at the vet. This is their first game back since they were embarrassed in a loss to South Alabama after their big upset win at LSU. That's why I think they'll be ready to play today. Uh, really, they were probably a two-touchdown favorite in the South Alabama game and did not play well at all. Put them behind the eight ball. They need to win out, Matt, if they're going to have a shot at this conference championship. And this ball will not be returned, so the Trojans will take over at the 25-yard line. And the aforementioned Brandon Silvers, the fifth-year senior quarterback, will bring him out for the Trojans. He's out of Orange Beach, Alabama, and Gulf Shores High School. He's number three in the conference, averaging just under 263 yards passing per game, but he's only number eight in passing efficiency. I think he's been a little disappointed at the start of the year. Uh, for their offense to really hit the high gear, he's going to have to play better. And I think take a little pressure off himself and get the ball to these other guys a little bit more and quit trying to make all the plays himself. He is a really good football player. Jordan Chun not in the starting lineup for the Trojans. Josh Anderson the starting running back here for this ball game. And that's Sidney Davis in motion. Anderson gets the first handoff. And Anderson's got 10 yards and more. And Anderson out across the 45-yard line. 15-yard pickup for Josh Anderson. Anderson, Jordan Chun expected to play today, but Anderson gets the first carry of the afternoon. Man, a little misdirection right off the bat and run the sweep to the boundary, and really there's nothing there. Got to get the Have ball to play. contained quicker. Personal foul, uh, defense number two. It, it, that's hit not out a bounds. good sign, and then get a 15-yard penalty, penalty on top of it. So a 30-yard gain for the Trojans on the very first snap, 15 yards on the ground and then 15 yards on the penalty, and the Trojans have it first and 10 at the Georgia Southern 40-yard line. Again, Jordan Chun, their star running back, missed last week's game against Georgia State and set out the second half of the South Alabama game with a lacerated leg. They expect him to get limited snaps here today. That's Anderson who goes in motion to the outside. 
And Silver's going to throw it to Johnson. Johnson looks like he wants to throw a pass. Heaves it downfield. Got a man wide open. It's caught for the touchdown. Troy Eford with the touchdown. It takes Troy just two plays to score, and the Trojans have an early 6-0 lead in the first 37 seconds. You know, we start out with a misdirection sweep for a big play, come right out with one of your tricks in your bag a little bit. They're out here in a diamond set, throw the ball back. Beautiful throw. I'm telling you, that is a very nice throw. Touchdown and not a great start for the Georgia Southern Bunch. They, they really needed some positives, Matt, to start this football game. Sumter on for the PAT. He puts it through, and Troy has a 7-0 lead. So Troy on homecoming day out to an early start against Georgia Southern. Up a touchdown in less than a minute. Troy out to a 7-0 lead on Georgia Southern after a 40-yard touchdown pass by the wide receiver, John Johnson to Troy Eford. And Neil Brown, who has never defeated Georgia Southern in his career, out to the early lead. Underwood will kick it off in a short pooch kick that's going to be taken at the 30-yard line by Dexter Carter. And Carter, who had a 70-yard touchdown return against New Mexico State a couple of weeks ago, returns it across the 50-yard line to the 43. Here's another look at that touchdown pass. Coach, I thought they had a chance. Oh, here's the return. Yeah, here's the return. And really, that, they're trying to get where you would fair catch it. That's an awful good that's an awful good player to be catching the ball and then not fair catch it and run with it. So kind of backfired in their face a little bit. Exactly what Georgia Southern needs. They need now to take this in, get some points out of this, and, and just gain some confidence. This, this team is just reeling right now in a confidence way. Shy Wirtz is the quarterback. He did not start last week because of injury, but he is healthy enough to play here today. They run the option, and he's going to run it down to the 38-yard line. Picks up about five yards on the play. There had been a lot of conversation. Now, Wirtz is going to have to come off the field because his helmet comes off, and so Cato Brown, who we are expecting to play anyway today, gets in on the second snap here. And Cato played well last week. I think they want to get him some snaps. This is, Matt, this is nothing but just true old triple option football, just in the gun instead of under the center. He hit the seam right there, gained about six yards. That's part of it. Quarterbacks are going to get popped by those secondary guys when they turn that ball upfield. How about this? They line up under center right here in the traditional triple option. This is what the Georgia Southern fans have wanted to see. L.A. Ramsby gets the handoff. And the tackle is made by Chris Weatherspoon. And Ransby is close to the first down at the 34-yard line. And this is what the Georgia Southern fans have been clamoring to see. Quarterback <laughs> under center running the old traditional triple option offense. We see it on the second snap of the game. And I think you and I thought we might just see a little from the conversations during the week. They didn't tell us that. But we had a feeling that they would see some of this. Third down and one, so they go under center for a second consecutive snap, and they fumble it, and it's going to be recovered by Georgia Southern for a first down, Malik Henry. And this is exactly why they said they were not going to do this. Brian Cook, the offensive coordinator, said, look, you can't turn it around in less than a week. And on the second time they do it, they fumble the snap. Well, and I think he's proved that to himself. But it's obvious that they're ready to go with some of this and going to just try to get better as the year goes on. That's a big play by Malik Brown getting in there and getting that football. It was a sure didn't need to turn that over. And they had running room in there. If they get yep. the ball right, there was an off-tackle area where I think they were going to gain some yards. So Shy Wirtz back in there at quarterback and back in the gun with the first down at the 31-yard line. Malik Henry really bailed him out by recovering that fumble. Monteo Garrett in there running back along with Wesley Fields, and the play gets blown dead. Jason Autry is our referee, and a timeout has been called. Timeout, Georgia Southern. Georgia First Southern calls timeout. the timeout. So the 30 second timeout. They try some wrinkles here with the uh, triple option under center. They fumble once, they go back to the gun, and now they have to burn a timeout because they're a little bit confused on what they want to do here. Yeah, and that's not good. Uh, really, the offensive stuff is still intact. Everything is the same for them, and 
They don't need to burn those timeouts early, early in a football game. It'll be interesting to see, Matt, if they just would Cato Brown go under the center. Yeah. And if Wirtz stays back in the gun, I'm, I'm anxious to see if they put Wirtz under the center. In. Yeah, that's what we've seen so far. Mm-hmm. It seems like there's a little bit of a pattern here, although this will just be our fifth snap of the game. Yep. So Wirtz comes back out there, and they line up in the shotgun. And Troy said they practice about 75% on the gun offense and 25% on what they call the Georgia Tech offense. That's the quarterback under center. Wirtz going to run option to the left side this time. He's going to keep it. Stiff arm, and he picks up only one yard out there on the edge as he's dropped at the 30-yard line. Weatherspoon again on that tackle along with the linebacker Tron Folsom. I think Shy had an, a, an area to cut up here, and he kind of strung it out a little bit too much himself. If you'll see right here, if he'd have cut up right there, got to number 24 in the secondary, strung it out a lot here, and at that point, now there's a lot of Troy guys that can run. You can't keep running to the boundary, and you're going to get caught by this bunch. Second down and nine. Troy has been fantastic on second down defense. You don't usually hear a lot about second down defense, but allowing less than two yards per carry on second down. But Wirtz right there cuts inside that time, just like you were talking about on the previous play that he didn't, and he gets it down to the 25. That's the exact spot I thought he could have cut up to play before. Uh, now they're still in a, in a third down and four situation. I think this is two down zone for sure. I would think Coach Lunsford would tell him that. You got two downs to make this first down, guys unless we lose yards and then have to kick a field goal. Georgia Southern has been terrible on third down this year. 22% dead last in the conference and near the bottom in the nation. They go back under center, and this time it's Wirtz under center. Going to hand off to Ramsby, and Ramsby did not get the first down, stopped at the 22, going to bring up a fourth and one, and we see if this is indeed four down territory. I think they'll go for this, and uh, that shows us that Wirtz is under the center, so they're both going to do it during the ball game at times. And, and um, it, 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 it's a tough thing to do in a week so far, other than a fumble snap. They look pretty good at doing it. They're not really running read plays, Matt, at this point. They're running handoff type plays, and uh, that's a big difference than the read triple option stuff. Fourth and one, Wirtz under center. Hands off Ramsby, and Ramsby gets the first down at the 20. And there was no question in Chad Lunsford's mind, you're going for it right here. You're 0-6. You're talking about a new start, fresh start, brand new season. This is week number one. We're only thinking about Troy. You go get that first down, and Ramsby got hurt on the play. Ramsby got hurt on the play. That is not a good sign. He's a good football player, but they've got good backs. Wesley Fields is a very good player, too. And uh, But I don't think there was any doubt Chad was going to go for that one. Go back to the gun now with Wirtz. Fields and Garrett line up behind him. Keeper, Wirtz, going to cut inside the 20 and down to the 11-yard line. We're actually closer to the 10 on a nice carry by Wirtz. Keelan Chairs made the tackle for Troy, and, and they, that's going to be a first down. Yeah, and these are triple option plays here. And really, the end had the quarterback right there, and he just got outrun. Wirtz can run around the corner. You better give a little ground and keep him in front of you, or he'll outrun you. Now a timeout has is under, preview, it's under further review. No timeout call. They're going to review the spot to see if they picked up the first down. How much of a challenge is this for Vic Coning and the Troy defense facing an offense that's going under center and in the shotgun, basically running the same offense but just with a different look every play? Oh, it's a big challenge, especially when you hadn't watched it on tape. You're guessing, and basically we told us earlier in the week, we were watching Georgia Tech tape to see, and he fell right close to the 10-yard line right there. I think they'll leave that spot alone. I don't know. I mean, they, they've got the ball lying on the 10-yard line. It looked to me like the ball hit it about the 10 and a half. I think he might be about a half yard short. So we'll check the spot here. Our replay official is Perry Havener, and he's got his first assignment of the day to check that out. And this is a Georgia Southern line we might also point out. A little bit makeshift here today. Their starting left tackle, Tommy Boynton, is missing his third straight game. So they're having to juggle some guys up front. Yeah, and to the credit of Georgia Southern, they have had a lot of injuries, uh, really struggled in the offensive line. 
I don't think they've played the same five of a football game together this year. So it's been tough on them a little bit. Uh, you would think this is what these guys do better, just really come off that football uh, because they've been in a triple option offense, even though it's in the gun. So they're used to coming off the ball. I don't think the offensive line really has a lot of adjusting to do other than the quarterback and center handling the situation. Well, Coach, you ran this offense when you were the quarterback at Vandy. You've coached this offense a great deal in your career. So what's the big difference for the quarterback, shotgun and under center? Timing. That's the big thing, 100%, just timing. The timing with the back that you're reading with. You're doing it six yards deep. Down at the 11-yard line, which is one one yard short of the line to gain. It'll be second and one at the 11-yard line. So Jason Autry with the announcement, they didn't give him the 10 and a half. They actually move it back to the 11. So they're a full yard, yard shy of the first down, second down and one coming up at the 11. In some ways, this is a break for Georgia Southern because they might could gain some more yards and yeah. get off that 10-yard line. First and goal on the 10 is the toughest thing offensively in college football. Works hands off to Fields, and Fields going to be dropped in the backfield. Baron Poole got penetration and hit him first, and so they actually lose another yard on the play, and it's going to be third down and two. Well, that sure doesn't help them when you lose yards on the play. Penetration. Right off the left tackle over there, and penetration will kill you in a read offense. And now they've got third down and two, but this, again, we know, Matt, this is a two-down area right here. Poole got by Ryan Northcutt, who's the guy that's moved from left guard to left tackle because of Boynton's injury. Wirtz running option to the right side, and he gets hit and tripped up. I think he picked up the first down. However, Tyquay Russell was the first guy to hit him, but Wirtz does pick up the first down just inside the 10. And I think Shaw's really upset with himself here. Kind of get his ankle, or he's fixing to walk in the end zone for a touchdown. So they spot the ball just inside the 10-yard line. So they basically have first and goal to go from the 10. And you were talking about how difficult that is for an offense. It is very tough. Uh, but they will think in four downs right here, and I would keep it on the ground probably all four downs unless they just get behind the chains. Garrett and Fields now line up right behind Wirtz. And the pitch goes to Garrett. Garrett on a cutback and down to the six-yard line. That was Russell again on the tackle for the Trojans. Picked up four on the play. Again, nice movement by the offensive line. That's been impressive so far. Cutting a lot of those Trojans at the line of scrimmage. Nice seam in there. If he can get there just a little quicker, he's probably going to gain four or five more yards. So second down and goal from the six. Fields up the middle. Slams down to about the three-and-a-half-yard line. That was the 11th play of this drive, Coach, and a flag down. We'll check the penalty. A week ago, Troy had only one penalty called on them at Georgia State. Offside, defense, number 30. This will be the first penalty on them today. They had gone into that Georgia State game, the most penalized team in the Sun Belt, had only one. That was the first time since 2012 they'd had a game where they had only one penalty called on them. And that was a big penalty that just, just cuts those yards shorter for this offense to get in the end zone. Long pitch goes to Garrett. He runs to the pylon and gets there. Touchdown. Monteo Garrett takes it in from three and a half yards out, and the Eagles on the board cutting the Troy lead to one. Well, that's a nice, impressive drive after the nice kickoff return by Dexter Carter. Gave him a short field. They go 43 yards on 12 plays. Very nice drive, and this is one of the uh, one of the base plays that they're running right here as a pitch sweep out of the triple option stuff. So far, Matt, they have not really run a read play. They've handed it off or pitched it when they've been under the center. Tyler Bass with the PAT. That makes him 12 for 12 on the season. Three-yard touchdown run for number 15, Monteo Garrett. Eagles use up seven minutes on the clock, and they tie the game at seven. Well, Chad Lunsford told us the energy has been really good this week. The guys have bought into the new start mantra. And after a bad start to this game defensively, a good start offensively as they go 43 yards on 12 plays and tie it up. Just what the doctor ordered with the drive now. I'm telling you, eat up some time, 
get some confidence from it. We need, need to come out and play a little defense here on this time. Just too easy with the first score. Well, I tell you what, Tyler Bass has been an absolute weapon for them on kickoffs. 22 out of 26 kicks this year have been touchbacks. And that one was out of the end yeah. zone, so he's got a strong leg. Troy could use him, looks like. And I tell you what, well, you know, punt, the kicks and, that they're doing. and Chad Lunsford was the special teams coordinator for the Eagles before getting the interim head coaching job. And you take a look at it, they've been very good on kick return average on their kick coverage, number three, number two on punt returns. And uh, number three on kickoff returns. They've been very good on special teams. In a year where they haven't been really good on much of anything, special teams has been a bright, st a bright spot for the Eagles this year. And has at the start of this game. Two big plays already. So first and ten, Anderson gets the handoff, and Anderson's going to bull his way forward for about Josh five Anderson yards the to the 30-yard line. Josh Anderson, the fifth-year senior, out of Douglasville, Georgia, South Paulding High School with 131 yards rushing on the season. Had a big game last week in his hometown of Atlanta against Georgia State. And again, Jordan Chun expected to play today, but limited. We have not yet seen him play in this game. They've got some really good running backs on this football team. They can go to a lot of guys. And that's Davis in motion behind the line for the Trojans. And a zone read keeper for Silvers this time. And Silvers has the first down at the 42-yard line. R.J. Murray had to make almost a touchdown-saving tackle right there. Or Silvers might have gone. Well, it's just a zone read, and the end took the dive. Somebody has got to have the quarterback. Not a good start for the defense. They've had some missed assignments. We thought they could have rushed the receiver when he threw the long pass right. a minute ago. Got to start playing a little better defense. First and 10 from the 43-yard line. Silvers with a pocket, stands in there and deflected off the hands of his tight end, Sam Letton. Rashad Bird, the linebacker, on the coverage, and it's going to be second down and 10. Brings up second down. Yeah, Georgia Southern, of course, when you're 0-6, you're not going to be good in many numbers. As I pointed out, they have been good special teams, but defensively, they're number 10 in the conference, allowing 470 yards per game, and they're last allowing 41 points per game. Really struggled on defense, and that's why this offense can, can help them if they could keep the ball and keep that time of possession as this game goes on. Silvers, they set up a screen, and there's contact there. Vildor... Had Thompson covered, no flag. Looked like there had been some contact with the ball in the air, but the Eagles don't get a flag. That's good news for them, and it's going to be third down and ten. And he's chasing him from behind, and it's a nice job by the corner here. They had it set up pretty good, but to, you've got to get the first guy blocked, and, and the corner made a beautiful play right there. Those plays are a lot of hit or miss in those quick screens to those wide receivers, uh, but that was a very nice play. Third down and ten. Troy has been at 41% on third down this season. That's number five in the Sun Belt. Henderson goes in motion to the top of the screen. Silvers, drag route underneath. It's caught by Eford, who had the touchdown catch earlier. He's going to be stopped at the 49-yard line by Vildor again, and that's going to be fourth down. That was a nice tackle because he breaks that second one right there. This thing could go. There's nothing left. But a very nice open field tackle. And these Troy receivers are dangerous now. I know the coaches talked to us earlier in the week. Got to get our receivers playing better. Got to get them going. Good stop by the Eagles right there. Miles Campbell back to take this punt. He's averaged 13 yards per return this season on seven attempts. Sumter on to kick for the Trojans. Nice high kick. Fair catch called for by Campbell. He's in some traffic. Makes the grab at the 17. And that's where the Eagles will put the ball in play Time for the out. second Time, time today. Time out on the field with 521 to play in the opening quarter. We're tied at seven in Troy. Georgia Southern back on offense. Interim head coach Chad Lunsford's team tied with Troy 7-7. I'm Matt Stewart along with Coach Watson Brown. Thanks for joining us. Homecoming day at Veterans Memorial Field on a fall-like day. It's been summer all week, and suddenly it's 54 degrees here in Troy. I'm sure the players welcome that. Works on the carry. Gets cut down by Andre Flakes. Flakes is a former wide receiver that they moved to secondary this year. He stops Wirtz after a two-yard game. 
And the big story for the Eagles, if you're just now tuning in, they've gone under center with this triple option here today. And they've run some shotguns, so they've been diverse in their looks in the spread option offense. Running option, fakes the pitch, and Wirtz going to get dropped at the 23-yard line. Sendarius Rookard, who is their leading tackler on the season, making his 41st tackle right there, going to bring up a third down and short. You know, Troy started out really trying to take the dive away. They're not letting them hand the ball off. Quarterbacks are having to keep it on the flanks. So far, they're playing pretty good on the flanks. I thought Wirtz could have pitched one of these on these first two plays to one of his backs and maybe gained a good bit more yards. Wirtz averaging 64 yards rushing per game. That's number eight in the Sun Belt. This is a third down and medium. Pitches this time to Garrett. Nice open field tackle by the linebacker, Tron Folsom, to drop him for a loss, and now it's going to be fourth down. Folsom beat his man on the block, shed the block, and made the tackle. And this is a mismatch. It's a running back trying to block one of these linebackers outside and Fields just could not handle that and and uh, really not a good situation for Georgia Southern to try to pitch that right into that mismatch to me. Vic Coning said they work on blocker shed circuits every day in practice. That was a great example of that work in practice paying off. Well, and that's where we talk all the time as coaches. Communicate and give them reps on what you're communicating. It's obvious you saw it right there with the Troy defense. Rooker back deep to take this punt from Flynn. He's going to have room to return this. Takes it at the 36. Nobody around him. Across the 50-yard line and across the 40 and down the sideline. Finally steps out of bounds. They'll spot it at the 32. I don't know whether Flynn outkicked his coverage or what, but there was nobody near him when he took that punt. You're exactly right, Matt, and I think that was more getting off the line of scrimmage. Great hold up by the Troy return team. And uh, my gracious, I'd love to be a returner when you run 20 yards before you even see a white shirt. Uh, that could have been a touchdown right there. That was very well blocked. And, and most of the time, that's your, your defense that's doing that. Poorly done by the punt coverage team of Georgia Southern. Sets up Troy with a short field now at the 32-yard line. Anderson gets the handoff and a big hole for him right up the middle. Josh Anderson into the end zone for a touchdown. My goodness. Uh, it's just right up the middle. Just nobody there. I mean, they've got a hat on everybody. Just a very, very easy run. Josh can take this one straight to the house. Big man in open field now. Defensive backs have a hard time getting Josh Anderson on the ground. Very well blocked, not very well played defensively. Big man is right, 5'11", 250, as Sumter pumps it through, and Troy has a 14-7 lead on the touchdown run by Josh Anderson. And they went right at the strength of the Georgia Southern defense. The uh, Trojans were very concerned about having to block Logan Hunt, number 91, and number 96, Ty Phillips, the tackles of the Eagles, but they went right at the strength of that defense and blew them off the ball. Uh, absolutely, and the big old tackle right on a linebacker, fed up really nice, just green grass, and, and, and Josh Anderson, he'd love to see that all day long now. He'll run for a lot of yards. Just cannot let a big man like this get loose with a football. He's running vertical straight up the field. Long day for defensive backs tackling that guy. Eagles, number six, Miles Campbell. And you mentioned it. I mean, you've got Jordan Chun, one of the real star running backs in this league, close to 1,300 yards rushing a year ago, and he hasn't played essentially since that LSU game, and they really haven't missed him. They missed him in the South Alabama game. Last two weeks, they really haven't even missed him. Oh, I'm telling you, they're really good at running back. I think that's why they're running the football more this year than they have. They're, they're, they're really, honestly, this, this bunch is much more maybe even called run first with their offense this year, and I can see why with these big backs. Underwood kicks off. They kick it deep to Campbell, who takes it at the six-yard line. And they run a reverse to Kennedy, and Kennedy across the 30 on a cutback. Kennedy still on his feet up to the 35-yard line. So Wesley Kennedy, the freshman out of Savannah and Benedictine, with a 25-yard return or maybe even close to a 30-yard return on Number the reverse. Six, this time they kicked it deep and had a little reverse off of it. 
Uh, two special teams plays have been big for Georgia Southern. Both of them on these kickoffs, and their kickoff guy has kicked two in the end zone. So that's really been the, the biggest advantage Georgia Southern's had early in the game is the kickoff and kickoff returns. So Cato Brown is back out there at quarterback the second time we've seen him. We saw Brown for a couple of snaps early on after Shy Wirtz had lost his helmet on the first play of the game. So Cato Brown back in there, and now he lines up in the shotgun taking snaps. And did they have a delay a game? Timeout. No, a timeout. This is their second well, they took timeout. the timeout to avoid the delay of game, and I believe it started to rain here as well. So, wow, how the, how the weather has turned here in the southeast. And if you're watching in the southeast, I'm not telling you something that you don't already know, but it was in the 70s, close to the 80s in most places in the southeast, and all of a sudden today it's become an October fall Saturday. We can fill it in the booth, yeah. can't we? I'm, yeah. I'm sure the players... I'm sure the players enjoy it. You see the, the fans are starting to run for the exits here as it's raining in Troy, Alabama. Getting a good shower, and it's a cold shower, yep. too, so we see some, see some fans heading to stay dry. There's not many circumstances in life where you like a cold shower. I mean, it's not. <laughs> and especially when you're at a football game. I can agree with that 100%. So first and 10, ball at the 35-yard line. Hand off Wesley Fields. He gets stopped in the backfield right away. Nothing doing on that play. It was Chairs again on the tackle. Okay, Keelan Chairs. Dropped him for a loss at the 34-yard line. Second and 11 coming up. And Cato Brown misses this read. If we'll watch it close, number 40 took the uh, – no, the linebacker took the dive right there. He's got to pull that ball and take it on to the outside. Big part of this triple option offense is quarterback reads, and he's reading a defensive lineman or a linebacker on the defensive side. Second down and 11, Ramsby, who got shaken up earlier in the quarterback in there. Short dive play for Ramsby. Zoe Bridges making the tackle as Ramsby picks up about four on the play, and it's going to bring up third down and seven from the 38. And this is what they're not good at. Yep. You, can't, nope. you cannot stay in these third and long being a triple option or run first team. Yeah. Puts you in a tough situation. Coach, they got to be in th third and four or less in order to survive. Absolutely. It'll be a long day if they don't stop this. Brown goes to the air first. Pass of the day for Georgia Southern is complete for a first down to OB Fortune at the 48-yard line. So it works. First time first time they go to the air and they pick up a first down. Really nice throw by Cato right here. He's got, got a pretty strong arm. Good protection. Got time to throw. Nice little curl route. Beautiful catch. They, they need that. There's no doubt their offense needs that. They've been a very poor third and long football team. 93 seconds to play in the quarter. Henry goes in motion and flips up to the top of your screen. Cato Brown stays in there at quarterback. He was 5 of 11 passing last week in that loss at UMass. He's going to run it right up the middle. Cato Brown to the 41-yard line. He picks up a first down on the play. Marcus Jones, the corner, made the stop. But that's a first down, mixing it up on offense with a pass and then a run right up the middle. You know, they're very close to being pretty good on offense today. They've missed some reads. The quarterbacks have not hit some seams. Cato Brown's come in and done a good job when he's been in the game. That was a big third down throw and a nice run right there on first and 10. And they're first and 10 again. And the rain's really starting to come down pretty hard right now. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. Rainey back in there at center. He had to miss the start of last week's game after being ejected for fighting in that New Mexico State game. Pitch play here. And Anthony, or Cato Brown, pardon me, is going to keep it. And he's going to get dropped Brown by Folsom. Right there at the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard on the play. And you know what, Coach? You know, Lunsford said it. Even Tyson Summers, before he was fired, said it. He, they, they felt like the offense was getting close, despite the criticism and all the bad stats that go with it. They felt like the offense was getting close every week, getting better every week. You know, Brian Cook said that to us also, the offensive coordinator. Turnovers has been such a big piece of what they've done. They've really turned the ball over way too much. They look like they're taking better care of it today. Uh, they've got to do better on first down to play before they did, but first down plays really haven't been great here at the That's start the of the football. Quarter. That's the end of the first 15 minutes here in Troy. The rain's starting to pelt the crowd here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. After 15 minutes, Troy on top, 14-7. to 7.
Start of the second quarter in rainy Troy, Alabama. Trojans up 14-7. Matt Stewart along with Coach Watson Brown will see if ball security becomes a bigger issue here now that the wet stuff has arrived. Cato Brown, the second of two quarterbacks used by the Eagles today, running the option. And Cato Brown picked up only about a Number yard 13, on the play, Cato if Brown. that. And now it's going to bring up third down and long. It's just hard to run those just kind of sweet plays at this Troy defense. They run so well, pursue the ball so well. Got to have a little misdirection, a little dive action with it. Just hard to take that ball and take off around the corner. And uh, Cato is fast, but uh, this Troy defense is very fast too. First year in the program for Cato Brown, a fourth year junior out of Ventura, California by a way of Moore Park College. Facing a third down, he converted a third down pass for a first down earlier in this possession. They'll go back to the air again. Brown fires to the outside, and it's caught by DeAndre Glenn at the 33-yard line, and this will bring up a fourth and two, and I bet they go for it. Oh, absolutely. They're going to go for this one, and a nice throw and catch. That's twice. Cato's made some nice throws on third and long. Puts it in a fourth and two situation. Let's see what they do here. Let's see if they were to get under the center, what they're going to do. I like that play call. They didn't go for the first down there. Let's just get close. We're going for it on fourth down. Under center now. Fields in motion. Hand off Ramsby. First down for Ramsby as he batters his way down to the 22-yard line. They convert on fourth down for a second time in this game. Now that's really what I believe in a lot. If you got short yardage, don't put the ball way back there in the gun. Get on the center. They've really run two plays. This is an off-tackle play where the guard goes and kicks out, and it's good to see Ramsby back in the game. He got hurt early in the game, and nice to see him back. First and 10, they go back to the gun. Cato Brown running option, going to keep it, and he's going to... Worm his way down to the 18-yard line, picked up four on the play. And it's interesting, a bit of foreshadowing. When I was talking to Brian Cook, the OC, early in the season, he said, you know, when you've got a young quarterback, it's sometimes better to get under center. You cut down on maybe some of those mistakes. He says, you look at Taquan Marshall, the, the quarterback at Georgia Tech, Ricky Dobbs at Navy when he was young. They went under center with him to cut down on mistakes and just kind of smush it in there and get three yards every time. And I, and I agree with that. You, you get into all the gun run and the gun reads and the throw in. Uh, you've got to have an experienced quarterback to handle all that. Pitch, it's dropped by Garrett, still loose, and Brown gets on top of it back at the 27-yard line. They lost a lot of yards on that one, close to 10. And, Matt, honestly, this is what they've been doing all year long. They put themselves in long yardage. If you watch the tailback fields, he did not put his eyes on the ball. He's looking to see where he's going to run and just drop the pitch. Thank goodness they got back on it. But now it puts them in third and long. And uh, let's see what they do right here if they try to run the ball, gain some yards, get in field goal range, or really try to throw it 16 yards or so to try to make the first down. It is third and 16. I think the thing up most, they need to be careful with the ball. Don't risk losing it here in a scoring opportunity. Brown going to take a sack at the 29-yard line. Jamal Statham made the tackle. And it's going to be fourth down. And let's see, they try a long field goal here by Tyler Bass. Yep, Bass comes on. And let's see where they end up spotting this thing. It's right in the middle of the field, so he's got a straight shot at it. Bass is 7 of 10 on the season. He's hit four straight and six of seven since missing his first two field goal attempts of the year at Auburn. This is going to be a 46-yard attempt right in the middle of the field and on a wet turf. Matt Flynn, the punter, is the holder. Kick on its way, and I think he might be off the mark. Nope, he's good. I thought that thing was going to hook on him. He kept it inside the uprights and knocks it through from 46 yards out. And so the Eagles get points. It's 14-10, four minutes into the second quarter. Chad Lunsford told us that the advice he had gotten almost resoundingly from every coach that he talked to this week was you got to be positive with the kids. When there's a coaching change like this, stay very positive, he said. That's what I told my staff. We've got to come with a lot of energy, and we've got to be positive in practice. And, you know, I think we see that. The team's playing very hard. Uh, they're playing enthused, watching the sidelines. They're all into the game. I think he's accomplished that part. 
here through the second quarter of the game. This one will be returned. Marcus Jones, the freshman, stumbles as he got to the 25-yard line. He falls forward. Let's see where they spot that thing. They're going to spot it at the 29. Early on the field as the runner was down to the 29-yard line prior to losing the possession. First down. We sure see this. Make sure he was on the ground when yep. he fumbled that football. I'm sure they're going to take a look at that one and, and just to see wet ball. That stuff happens a lot. You got to secure that ball. Let's see if we can see if he's on the ground before he fumbles. Yes, yeah. he absolutely is. Ground caused the fumble, it appeared. So now the Trojans go on offense from the 29-yard line. Jamarius Henderson with his first carry of the ball game, and Henderson rumbles up to the 41-yard line as he picks up 12 on the play. Henderson, redshirt sophomore out of Midland City, Alabama, with 222 yards rushing on the season and averaging right at seven yards per carry. Another good football player, another good back. Missed tackles, missed tackles, missed tackles. Got the tackle better. Handoff goes to Henderson again. A big hole for Jamarius Henderson. It's a foot race, and he's going to win it. That was 59 yards. Now they're just sitting here running a straight, simple little zone play right up the middle. Just getting hats on everybody. A little bit of a missed tackle there. These running backs are running vertical. When you're running straight up the field, it's going to be a long day for the white shirts. They've got to get the ball stopped from tackle to tackle. They're really struggling on the zone play, as we call it, going right up the center. Sumter with the PAT makes it 21 to 10. The Trojans have scored in 37 seconds, 7 seconds, and 45 seconds. They lead by 11. Twenty-one ten, Troy leading Georgia Southern. The Trojans have had the ball for just 10 plays and three minutes and 25 seconds compared to Georgia Southern. They've had it for 16 plays, actually 26 plays and 16 minutes and 11 seconds. Shows you that time of possession and always the answer. Big plays work just as well as, as 18 play drives. And boy, they've had some big plays start this football game. Kick is going to be taken by Campbell, retreating to the goal line. Miles Campbell going to bring it across the 10, and now the 20. And Campbell is going to be tackled by Nixon at the 29-yard line, 29 and a half, and that's where the Eagles will go on offense. And there's no doubt about it, the Eagles, they've done some nice things offensively. That's not going to mean anything at the end of the day if they can't get some stops defensively. No, they're playing very well on offense, and the special teams really has been very good in this game. The defense has just been so poor, and you can't run this run-oriented offense with a poor defense. It's just you can't play catch-up all day long. Cato Brown back in there at quarterback, and they're running out of the gun as they have it spotted at the 30-yard line for this new possession. Wesley Fields right up the middle. Wesley Fields across the 50 and down to the 31-yard line. Wesley Fields, so a big play in the run game for the Georgia Southern Eagles as Fields gets just his third carry of the day. Well, would you return the favor the exact run that Troy has scored twice on? Look at this. Right up the middle. We're looking at the quarterback because we thought he had the ball, but the back brooks it right off the center. Running just his own play and, and hurt him straight ahead. Fields runs it again, this time not as much success as Callaway tackles him at the 29-yard line. Actually, Baron Poole, 97, not 94 with the tackle. And it's going to be second down and seven from the 29-yard line. Looks like it might be a busted play. Cato Brown going to try to turn something out of it. And Andre Flakes submarines him, and he gets to the 24-and-a-half yard line with that pickup, about uh, eight yards on the play, and what looked like a busted play, Coach. I've always said 
If you're going to run a lot of busted plays, make sure you got a quarterback that can run. They've got one of those, and they've kept the chains at the right spot. Got two downs now to make three yards. Third down and three. Got to stay away from negative plays here. They were down here before, and a negative play really hurt them. Rain really falling hard here at Veterans Memorial Stadium in the second quarter. High snap. Cato Brown going to run for the first down and gets it down to the 17-yard line. Let's we'll see if he's okay. Looked like he took a shot on his ankles, but he's going to be okay. And interesting here, looks like they've kind of gone now with Cato Brown back-to-back -back possessions. Maybe he's kind of taken over here with the hot hand. It looks to me to be just a little bit better of a, of a runner with the football in his hands and a little better operator of the option stuff. At least at the start of this game, that's what it looks to me. First and 10 for the Eagles. Ball at the 17-yard line. They're down 11. Fields grabbed by Sanders in the backfield and dropped for a loss. Trayvon Sanders drops him at the 21. Four-yard loss, but there's also a flag on the play. Trayvon Sanders on the tackle. There's a flag on the play. Sideline warning, Georgia Southern. It's their first warning of the game. Second down. So a sideline warning on the Eagles. No penalty. That was the fifth tackle for loss for the Trojans in this game. And that's big. It's, it's really slowed the Georgia Southern offense down. They've fun. made up one, uh, but it's hard to make it up in this offense, and here they are second and 12. Movement will have penalty. Flags dropped Flag on this. And now second and 15 or, or 17 probably. Ball start. start. Offense. offense, number 66. Five-yard penalty, second down. Jake Edwards. The offensive lineman looks like Edwards is playing at left guard right now. Northrup, who has been the left guard on the depth chart, playing left tackle because Boynton's out for a third consecutive game. But here we are, second and 20, and this is two times down in the red zone or close to the red zone, and they've, they've really hurt themselves. Brown being chased out of the pocket, and Reese got to him, and he throws it away. Let's see if they drop a flag on this. I don't think they will. Pass, and please. it's going to be third down. Yeah, I think he's out of the pocket. As long as the ball crosses the line of scrimmage, it's not a penalty. I think that it did. But here we are, third down and 20. When you're first down and 10 on the 18-yard line going in, and this is twice this has happened to them. They've got to get rid of these negative plays. And, and Troy's done a fantastic job, in my opinion, of giving them negative plays on some of these drives. Getting to the quarterback, it's kind of been an issue for Vic Koning's defense this year. They started to really tee off on the quarterback last week against Georgia State. They're doing it again this week against Georgia Southern. Brown to the air, and it's intercepted at the 13-yard line by Folsom, the linebacker. Folsom comes to the near side and steps out of bounds at the 18-yard line, and the Brown Eagles pass. turn it over. And a man down for Troy back at the 14-yard line. At, that might be Jalen Harris, the corner, who was in on the coverage and broke up the pass intended for Mashad that ended up popping up into the air and an easy interception on the deflection. That's actually... Lebby, the linebacker, number five, who's hurt on the play. And so while they tend to him, we'll take a break. Trojans back on offense when we get back. Troy leading Georgia Southern 21 to 10, going back out on offense after the interception by the linebacker, Folsom. Really has a lot of protection. Nice time to throw. Could have been caught, got a little hand in there, I think, and flipped the ball up in the air and a tilt drill in this wet grain. And there's where Libby got hurt a little bit. I think he caught him with his shoulder. So first and 10 for the Trojans. Handoff goes to Anderson. And Anderson finds no running room right there. Darius Sapp making the tackle for the Eagles after a two-yard pickup at the 21-yard line on a what has turned into, from a weather standpoint, a miserable day here in Troy on homecoming day. Uh, hard rain, and it's in the low 50s. Only the hardiest of fans standing out in the rain to watch this one. Everybody else has either grabbed shelter underneath or they've headed to their cars. 
Second down. Anderson again. And Anderson breaks out of the tackle of De La Rosa. He stays with it and helps about four other guys get him on the ground at the 26-yard line. Again, no Jordan Chun today. And I'm guessing the way things are going, we probably won't see him again today. Well, in a rainy, wet day, too, they may just hold him now. It's just trying to get him one more week and maybe get him back. But and they've got a short week. They play Idaho here at the Vet on Thursday night on ESPNU. So you decide, do we want to use him today? we got the lead. Can we use him today? Might not have him ready for Thursday. Maybe we just hold him for Thursday. And that might be their thinking right now. I think you're probably right. Anderson coming this way on the carry. And Anderson going to be dropped by Sapp at the 27-yard line. And Sapp's a guy that had kind of disappeared on the depth chart. He's a 6'1", 320-pound senior. He had only three tackles the entire season. He just made two on that one possession. Well, it's nice to see guys make tackles. That's a nice stop. That's a very nice stop. That's the second stop of the game. But that's in three downs and out. Played three running plays pretty good. Gain some confidence over there and get the defense better. I think this offense is moving it well enough today to hang in this football game if they can just get some more stops on the defensive side. Sumter, number six in the conference, averaging just under 43 yards per punt. And this one hit towards the sideline. Campbell has it hit in front of him and bounced right by him. Turns into a great bounce for Troy and rolls dead at the 21-yard line. And Campbell really had no choice. He's kind of stuck there in no man's land with the wet turf and everything. Last thing you want to do is risk it and try to come up and make a play on that. And that really was a kind of a shank punt. Yep. It, was, it was short. I don't think he could have possibly got to it. And that shows you how those stats can be misleading sometimes. Hits the ground and on these turfs and rolls another 20 yards. Eagles go back on offense. We'll see who the quarterback is this time. And it is, again, Cato Brown. So Cato Brown looks like we've kind of developed a theme here that Cato Brown is taking over as the quarterback today. I think he's played well. I, I, I really, I have not seen a lot of mistakes made by number 13. Cato's doing a good job. Uh, the long yardage situations really haven't been his fault. Option gets blown up by Callaway. Sixth tackle for loss for the Trojans today as they drop Brown back at the 15-yard line. I just think it's still, I said it earlier in the day, I just think it's hard to, to run these wide sweeps against this Troy defense. They run so well. And a little penetration right there again, second and long. Yeah, and Coach, they run to the boundary. They're, they're running to the short side of the field. Yeah, I know. Second down. I don't know, maybe that's what you want to do in that situation. Well, and, and the defense may be overshifted more yeah. to the field. I'm not sure about that part. I, it's more the philosophy to me, just trying to run those wide sweeps with quarterback. Well, the rain has turned into an absolute monsoon now as Fields gets to the 26-yard line. And it's going to be third down in about seven. It is a hard and cold rain. Brown wants to throw, kind of sliding on that turf as he does, and he completes it for a first down. Nice play. Caught out on the edge. OB Fortune with the grab, and it's going to be a first down. And that's third and five. That keeps them in run type, run type defenses. I thought there was a really good simple call, simple throw on the side, and a very good call. Move the pocket. Throw the little hitch on the outside. You got Troy still in kind of a run pass mode and not just playing all out pass because it was third and five. He kind of looked like he was on skates back there. His feet were <laughs> sliding on him as he was trying to plant and throw. I would say he probably was. <laughs> Ramsby on the carry. Picks up just a couple of yards on the play. That was Callaway in on the tackle again. Callaway's been their leading tackler on that defensive line. Came in with 18 stops on the season. Three tackles for loss. He's a junior out of Alabama. Arrington High School. Yeah, Seth is a good football player. They're very good in the front seven. Troy has been hard to run on all year long. Georgia Southern's probably doing as good a job as anybody has in running the football right at them. High snap goes over the head of the quarterback. Fields has to get on top of it back at the 19-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Well, 
Georgia Southern self-destructing and killing themselves with turnovers and mistakes and penalties timeout. here Troy. in this first half. First charge timeout. And Troy calls so a timeout here because they want to save some Please time and get the, the game clock to their hands back on the ball seconds. before the end of the half. Just uh, honestly, man, I think that's this is kind of the epitome of the yeah. year for them. It's, they just shoot themselves in the foot with a turnover, with a bad play, with loss of yards. Center snapped the ball while the quarterback was even still talking and looked like he was trying to change the play and what they had. Uh, if they could correct these things, when they, when they keep the chains normal, they've moved the football today, but they absolutely have shot themselves in the foot. <laughs> yeah, there are some dedicated fans right there now. I'm not sure I would. that would be enough cover for me. There better be some heavy jackets. Yeah. Let me tell you, even with the poncho, the they're getting wet. <laughs> they're getting wet and cold. Eagles are 5 of 10 on third downs in this game, but this is a third down and 30. The last thing you want to do is cough it up right here. Pass complete to Fortune out on the edge, and he gets dropped at the... 30-yard line, well short of the first down, so the Trojans going to get it back with one timeout left in their pocket. And plenty of time to score, as we timeout. pointed out. All of their Troy. scores have come in timeout. less than a minute. This is a 30-second timeout. And they have only 5 minutes and 38 seconds time of possession in this first half, yet they lead by 11. Well, and it's, and it's been easy scores. Yeah. Just long, quick runs, one long pass on, a, on kind of a trick play. But they've been easy scores. They really haven't had to work very hard for them. So it's been an easy first half for Troy. And it's really not been too bad on the defense because Georgia Southern has just put themselves in so many long yardage situations that it's made it the play calling on the defensive side of the ball much easier. Neil Brown has done a fabulous job here as the head coach of the Troy Trojans, following in the footsteps of one of your old rivals, uh, the legendary Larry Blakeney, who's the field bears his name here after his retirement. Neil Brown's done a great job here. They will be bowl eligible with a win today if they can get it. Flynn, oh my goodness, a, a dying duck off his foot. Does take a bounce for the Eagles and rolls dead at the 39-yard line. And so that's where the Trojans take over, 61 yards away from a touchdown, and two minutes and 28 seconds to work with, and they have one timeout remaining as well. Matt Larry Blakeney did a great job here, just a fantastic job. The field's named after him and, and, and well-deserved with that. Neil Brown was on the staff with yep. him at some point and then got to come back as head coach, and I think he's... He's really stepped this program up, and, and uh, their, their big win over LSU was huge for them to, in a national image-wise for sure. Toss goes to DeAndre Douglas, and Douglas with his first touch of the day runs it up to the 42-yard line. Raymond Johnson making the tackle for the Eagles. Douglas had four touches and two touchdowns last week against Georgia State. Meantime, Silvers has thrown the ball only three times the entire game. He's one for three and seven yards. And uh, quite frankly, I mean, the Trojans are scoring so easily. They've run only 13 plays the entire game. Josh Anderson on the carry up to the 45-yard line. He got two that time, and it's going to bring up third down. The clock rolling at one minute and 49 seconds to play in the half. A little surprised they're not just letting it go right here. But with this rain and that wet ball, they sure don't want to create a, a, a bad issue for them. I think if they make this first down, they'll really start throwing it around. Anderson sprints out to the top. They run a screen for Thompson, and Thompson going to pick up the first down at the 50-yard line. Emmanuel Thompson, the senior out of Clayton, Alabama, with his 29th catch of the season. Logan Hunt, the defensive tackle, made the stop after the catch, and it's going to be first and 10 from the 50. Let's see if they wind up and try to get it down the field now. That was a very safe throw. I would expect to see him start throwing a little further down the field. Pocket, throw, and off the hands of Thompson that time at the 35-yard line. He couldn't hold on to it. Just timing there. Matt fell down on his cut, tried to get back up and catch the ball, but you lose your timing. Passing the football is all about timing and spacing in college. And uh, when, you, when you fall down like that, your timing gets off, and then it's a hard catch. 
been a really weird season for the fifth-year senior. He has not made that step up from his junior to the senior season that coaches typically expect the quarterback to make or any player to make for that matter. He's no, he, you're right, Matt. He, he hasn't. I, they've, they've run the ball more this year. I think that's a little bit of it, but they just haven't really been able to get their passing game going. Off the hands of Eford, and that's been one of the problems right there, inconsistency among the wide receivers. And Neil Brown makes no bones about it. His wide receivers have been a disappointment. The, the game last week against Georgia State was probably their most complete performance of the season. But they've had way too many drops, and that was a third down drop right there, or actually a second down drop right there. And, and that shows you that the quarterback doesn't get credit sometimes. Both of those throws by Brandon Silvers were really nice throws. One the receiver fell down on, and the second one the receiver dropped it. So it, it always goes on the quarterback when it when it's uh, when it's an incomplete pass, and it's it's not always his fault. Third down. Here comes a rush and a flag. The Eagles might have got a jump on their blitz. This might be against Georgia Southern. Ball start, offense, number six. Or it might be against Troy. Start penalty, third down. <laughs> so this will back up the Trojans to the 45-yard line. Troy, one of three on third downs and now facing a third and 15 with 73 seconds to play in the half. This will be an interesting play call if they go after this first down, if they throw a, more one of those screens and a little ball control. The rain has let up, so they may go ahead and go for this one. They go for it on the sideline, and it's caught over the shoulder by Willis for a first down at the 22-yard line. Damian Willis with his first catch of the day. Just, just a drop back fade route, very safe throw, and, we, and Willis does a great job. They've been waiting for him to come on. They said he was sick last yep. week had the flu, had a great week of practice. And the coach has said he may have a, a big game this week. That's his first big one right there. They throw it out to the edge. It gets broken up by Lip Trot as they try to go right back to Willis, this time on a screen. It's incomplete second and 10. In order to make that screen work, the wide receiver who's out there with you has to block the corner. They didn't pick up Lip Trot on that play. And it's going to be an incompletion second down. Honey, that, honestly, that's the best thing Georgia Southern's done. They've played the wide receiver screens very well. That's the third one, and I think maybe five yards at the most is all they've gained. Silvers comes to this side, caught and broken up. Let's see if that's going to be a touchdown. No. Incomplete. Douglas did not have possession long enough because Vildor separated him from the ball. Kendall Vildor made up for the play before. He was the corner on the fade route, and this time it was... They hit the seam in what we call three deep zone. Corner makes a great hit. You've got to come down with that ball, possess it, step into the end zone, and that was an incomplete pass. Very nice play. Very nice break by the freshman right there. Vildor brings the hammer and breaks it up in the end zone, and so it's going to be third down and ten. Clock stopped at 57 seconds. Hand off to Anderson. Anderson first down and more inside the 10 and down to the six. Lip Trot got him on the ground, but that's going to be first and goal to go for the Trojans. What a nice call right here. Expecting pass. Got him reached. Got those defensive linemen reached. Got Anderson into the space with the football. And again, running vertical with those backs all day long. Anderson gets gummed up at the line of scrimmage. No gain right there. Ty Phillips fell on top of him. Clock running with 32 seconds. Trojans have one timeout remaining. They're taking their time. They've got plenty of time right here. Don't rush yourselves. Make sure you get the right play call. Get lined up proper. Silvers fires. Tight end is open for the touchdown. Sam Letton with his first touchdown catch of the season. Comes with 13 seconds to play in the half. And the Trojans are now leading 27 to 10. Really just snuck the receiver into the back of the end zone behind the coverage. Lays right over the top. Great throw and catch. Beautiful drive. 
And boy, that really hurts Georgia Southern. They had settled in, played pretty well, had the bad snap, get the, get the long yardage, have a short punt, let the Trojans take it down the field and score right before the half. Sumter for the PAT. And the Trojans lead it 28 to 10 with 13 seconds to play before the break. Silvers with his fifth touchdown pass of the season. And three of them have come in the last three halves of play. He had tw uh, two last week at Georgia State and one here today against the Eagles. Well, that's a killer drive. It's just a, a very nice job. Made a couple of third down and longs. Beautiful call and had a run called in third down and long as the clock was running down. Made the first down with Anderson. And then a beautiful throw in the end zone. Brandon's playing well. I think he's he's about to get back on track. Yep. And uh, and he's had some drops today. We touchdown drop right before that. I, I think by Douglas there that was a nice hit by the corner. But they've had two or three drops on him. But I think Brandon's getting back. This is a this is a dangerous football team, the Troy Trojans. And I think they're still in the race. I really do. I think they got to win out. Yep. But I still think this is a team you're going to have to deal with. They play Arkansas State the last game of the regular season. They do not play App. So they'll have to count on somebody else to beat the Mountaineers. Those are the two teams ahead of them that still have no losses in the conference. Campbell is going to take this at the five. And Campbell still dancing and comes out of there. Watch out. Campbell. Goes down at the 38-yard line as time expires here in the half. And a man down for Troy as well. We have a flag down at the 25-yard line as well. So let's see whether the half is over or not. Great return by Miles Campbell. Gee, he just kept dancing. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number 24, 10-yard penalty. First down. The penalty is declined. That's the end of the half. So there you go. Halftime here at Troy. The Trojans with a 28 to 10 lead. So Troy will head to the locker room. They are two quarters away from bowl eligibility. Scored four touchdowns. in just seven minutes of time of possession. Welcome to the Capital One Halftime Report. And this is the Capital One Halftime Report from Veterans Memorial Stadium in Troy, Alabama. The Troy Trojans with a 28-10 lead on the Georgia Southern Eagles. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll talk to Phil Cunningham, head coach of the Troy Trojans Sunbelt Conference Men's Championship Basketball Team. Here's a look at today's Dr. Pepper campus moment. And it's been a wet and cold day on campus. And for the students who braved the driving rainstorm in that first half, the good news is that it looks like the rain has cleared out and it's just windy and cold now. So but at least it's not raining anymore. It's, it's let up on the rain. Maybe some of these folks can enjoy the second half. Well, they're enjoying halftime so far. The first half belongs to the Troy Trojans despite just seven minutes of time of possession. The Trojans with a 28 to 10 lead on the Georgia Southern Eagles. Matt Stewart along with Coach Watson Brown and uh, the Trojans very efficient. When they got the ball, they scored. And right up the gut. I mean, they're just going right up the center. Some big long runs, big backs going at you. And, and Georgia Southern has struggled again with getting themselves in tough situations and long yardage. Can't make it up. Right before the half, that was just a killer drive. Well, let's take a look at the uh, first half highlights, and the Trojans scored on their very first possession, and they scored in less than a minute on the double pass. Silvers to John Johnson, and Johnson found Eford for the 40-yard touchdown. Very well executed. We thought they could have gone ahead and tried to sack him, let him throw the football, and he threw a nice pass. Monteo Garrett took it in on the next possession for the Eagles. We were tied at 7-7. But right up the middle, you mentioned right up the gut. This was Josh Anderson right up the gut. 
Oh, big back, straight up feel. Uh, <laughs> that's the last thing you want to let these guys go in and, and do it again. Jamarius Henderson did it. 59 yards right up the middle. It was 21-10 at that point. And then late in the first half, Silvers to the tight end, Clark Quisenberry for the touchdown in the back of the end zone to make it 28-10. And I thought that was the killer drive of the first half. If the Golden Eagles could have got off the field and got into half, but now they're down scores. And it would be very interesting to see what they do offensively if they stick to their stuff that they do and run that football at the start of the second half. And I think you hit the nail on the head. The Eagles have been their own worst enemy. They've been in scoring territory in a place where they could get some points and typically they either fumble the ball, take a big loss, a tackle for loss, or they have a penalty that kills their drive. Well, and then the snap over the quarterback's head really created the last score for the Trojans. So it's, it's a tough second quarter for Georgia Southern. And we'll see what happens with the Eagles offensively. They pretty much went with Cato Brown most of the way in that first half after actually shy words led them to their only touchdown. But they went with Cato Brown, and I think he's a little bit better passer, and uh, you thought he was a little bit better with the option than Wirtz. I thought he executed the option play a little better. Uh, they may play both of them in the second half. I think they're trying to decide who their quarterback is. Wirtz got hurt a little bit in the last game. Cato Brown got in. Played well, knew they were going to give him a shot of some kind, and and I thought I thought Cato did a good job. Did not feel like a lot of the long yardage situations that they got themselves in in the first half was caused by Cato Brown. Well, the Trojans who scored late on the touchdown pass from Silvers to Quisenberry at the end of the half will be kicking off to the Eagles here to start the third quarter. And after a uh, little confusion out on the field, they flip sides, and now the Eagles go to the other end to get it right. Georgia Southern 0-6, first time since 1941 that they've been 0-6. That's a little misleading. Still bad, but they, they didn't have football between 1941 and 1982 because of the war. But it's still been a long time since they've started this season so poorly and a proud proud program strong tradition they're just not used to this i think that's probably why they made the coaching change in mid-season uh it's just been a been a very tough year for them underwood's gonna kick it away and it's gonna be taken by campbell two yards deep in the end zone they fake a handoff this time to kennedy and tackled at the 11 yard line Good coverage by the Trojans on that play. Andre Flakes making the tackle on special teams, so the Eagles will start deep in their own end, and we'll see who the quarterback will be to start this third quarter. I think Wirtz is coming out, so I thought they might let them both play some in the second half. I still think they're trying to decide exactly who is going to be their starting quarterback as they go through the rest of this year. And I know they feel like there's some wins still left on the schedule. Well, Coach Lunsford told us he felt like there was enough energy to revive the season as they hand off to Fields on the very first play. Statham making the tackle after Fields picks up about six on the play up to the 18-yard line. Fields in the first half, six carries for 44. So that's going to put him up over or right at 50 yards on the day. He's averaging 59 per game, which is ninth best in the conference. Second down and four, they go under center. We saw this wrinkle in the first half early, actually the second snap of the game. Handoff goes to Ramsby, and Ramsby going to be close to a first down at the 22-yard line. Ramsby, six carries for 26 yards in the first half. And that will be a first down. That's the 10th first down of the ball game for the Eagles. They're last in the conference in first downs offensively. Which you would not expect being a run-oriented offense and a ball control offense, you would expect. Really, if you're running that style of offense, you should be up toward the top of the league in number of first downs. Ramsby gets it again, and Ramsby picks up about four yards up to the 26 on that carry right there. 
Rams be slow to get off the ground. Let's see if he stays in the game here, and he's going to come out. He got, he got hurt in the first half, too. I don't know what his injury is, but I think he's still struggling. Tough kid staying on the field, trying to help his football team get back in this game. Option quarterback, when he came to Georgia Southern, they moved him to running back in his redshirt freshman season. Now out of the gun for Wirtz. And let's see, did we have movement by the Eagles up front? We did. Caleb Kelly, the freshman offensive lineman. He's a backup who's seen a lot of run today. He's penalized. I know it's so frustrating to them, and it's just what they did in the first half here. They got second down and five. Now they're back to or six, second and 11 now. They've just done this so many times today in so many different ways that they've created it, either with a bad snap or or a loss of a big loss with penetration or a penalty. Just been a lot of different ways. And here they are second and long again. Handoff. Nope. Keeper by Wirtz. Wirtz doesn't pitch. And he's going to be dropped at the 25-yard line by Tyquay Russell. And it's going to bring up third down and about seven. And here's exactly what we're talking about. This would be third down and one right now. Nice run in the seam, one-on-one. Ooh, if he could pitch it right there, he's got a chance to pitch it to the back. I think Fields wanted that one pretty bad. But this is what we're talking about. Now it's third down and eight, and it really should be third down and one. you got to get to the 32. Ball on the 25. Fields in the backfield with Wirtz. Wirtz going to go to the air for the first time today. And fires and intercepted and then dropped. Two guys had a shot at it and an interception at the 31-yard line, and neither one could come up with it. Blaze Brown had a chance to pick that thing and couldn't hold on. Well, just overplayed the cut. He, they knew they were going to run something right at the chains. A lot of times you'll tell those defensive backs, overplay those cut areas on third down right where that first down is. That's exactly what happened right there. And he'll have to watch that one on Sunday. He had a walk-in touchdown if he catches that one clean. Flynn going to punt for the Eagles. Rugby-style kick that hits short at the 46 and downed at the 47. So a short field for the Troy Trojans as they get ready to head out there on offense for the first time in this third quarter. Great field position to start. Nice stop. Again, Georgia Southern kind of stopping themselves, but a good stop by Troy. And now they've got great field position to really go and put this one in and make it really hard and, and basically kind of put the game away right here. Trojans 5-2. and two. Next win makes them bowl eligible for the second consecutive season. They beat Ohio 28-23 last year in the Dollar General Bowl in Mobile. Sixth bowl appearance in Trojans history. Handoff goes to Josh Anderson. Darius Sapp going to wrap him up and drop him at the line of scrimmage. Brings up a second down and 10. You know, toward the end of that second quarter, we thought the line of scrimmage was being played better by the Georgia Southern defense. That was a good start in the second half. It's kind of the same play they busted for two long runs in the first half. So they're playing a little bit better up front. That's a good sign for them. Three tackles for Sapp today. He had three tackles the entire season when the day started. Silver's out of the gun. Got a pocket to work with. Fires underneath to Thompson. Had his legs cut out from neath him by Monquavian Brinson, the corner. And it's going to bring up third down. Really excited about Brinson. They think he's going to be a really good, is a good football player. They're going to be a great football player before he leaves Georgia Southern. Great time to throw. They're just not getting any pressure on him at all. Played pretty well, though. Now I've got him third and five. Brinson, a sophomore out of Atlanta Mays High School. Three picks on the year. Number two in the conference and passes defensed with nine. And now it's going to be third down and five. Ball just across the 50 at the Georgia Southern 48. Anderson sprints to the outside. Silver's guns in the middle. Incomplete for McCormick. And it's going to be fourth down. Let's see what the Trojans do here. 
I think uh, Neil Brown said we're going for it. No punting unit on. I'd now be, here they come. Yeah, I'd be very surprised if he goes for that. With the lead he has, those five yards have been tough. and I, I, I thought he would punt the football right there. Good stop, though. That's, that's a big stop because one more score could really put Georgia Southern in a tough spot, especially being a, more of a run-oriented offense. That was a very nice stop. Get the football back here and make a long drive. Get back in the game. Sumter punting from the 39. He's kicked eight inside the 20 this season. Rugby-style kick. This one is going to hit at the 10 and bounce into the end zone. That'll be just the second touchback for Sumter this season as the Eagles will bring it out to the 20-yard line and be on offense when we get back. Neil Brown's Troy Trojans 28-10 lead on Georgia Southern as the Trojans go back out there on defense. He had said this week to reporters that he still didn't feel like they were playing uh, their best in any of the three phases of the game. Although they felt like their game against Georgia State was probably the most complete game they had played, and that included their 24-21 upset at LSU back in late September. And I think he's just waiting for them to come on because I think they are a very dangerous team and may have as much talent as anybody in this in the league in the Sun Belt this year. I still think they're a major factor. They've played solid today, but they missed some opportunities to make some big plays. I think I know where he's coming from. And I think he, uh, one of the big areas was just getting better at receiver. They've just been a little inconsistent at receiver, which has not helped Brandon Silvers either. Handoff goes to Ramsby. Ramsby slashes in there at the 27-yard line. Folsom, the linebacker, making the tackle, going to bring up third down and short for Georgia Southern. But this is a great opportunity. The Eagles today represent four consecutive opponents for the Trojans that have losing records before they close out their regular season against Arkansas State. Oh, they have a great chance to make a run, and it starts today. That's why we both knew this was a big game for Troy. Third down and short for the Eagles. Cato Brown is in there at quarterback. They're running option with him. He's going to keep it, and Brown's going to pick up the first down at the 31-yard line. Flake's making the tackle along with Blaze Brown, and that'll move the sticks for the Eagles. Nice off-tackle play. Got in an unbalanced line quick on him right there. Got good movement. This is what they need to do, just find a way to keep making first down after first down. If you watch here, see good movement. He's four or five yards downfield before a, a, a dark shirt gets to him right there to tackle him. They have gone under center some today, but primarily been operating out of the shotgun as they had been all season. That had been the speculation around the Eagle Nation all week is could they get back under center this week on offense, and they did show them a little bit of that today. And another tackle for loss. Barker gets to Brown and drops him at the 28-yard line. They lose three on that play. And Achilles Hill all day long. Here's first and 10 and uh, just played this well. Again, that, that sweep play on the outsides really struggled for him most of the day. Cato Brown did a good job right there of not losing more yards, taking it back upfield and gets them in a second and 12. Sixth tackle for loss for Barker. This season, seven tackles for loss for the Trojans' defense today. And Folsom, bad pitch, and the Eagles are fortunate to come up with that ball. That's a mistake there by Brown. Folsom had him in the grasp, and he whipped the ball out there to Fields, who got on top of it. That could have easily been a turnover. Oh, this should have been, really. They're very lucky here. You do not take that ball and flip it out there like that. Nice job by Fields. Looked like he's a shortstop right there, getting that quick grounder coming at him. But tato has got to learn he's young, and uh, he, he will do a better job with that as he goes. He's not got a lot of experience in playing time. It's better to take the tackle for loss than turn the ball over. Now it's going to be third down and 14. Here comes a blitz. Bull rush coming. Pass got batted down by Baron Poole. The Trojans really brought a lot of pressure that time. Brought a linebacker from deep. And Poole bats it out of the air. It's fourth down. 
you know, no offense operates well when they give up a lot of tackles for loss. But the Georgia Southern offense in particular, with it being an option offense, those tackles for loss are just absolutely deadly because they don't really have the passing game to get the yardage back. No, Matt, you nailed it. I mean, it doubles it for a run-oriented offense like that. And, and uh, it's just they've got to find a way as this season goes on to quit having those loss of yard downs and getting in those third and long situations. Line drive rugby kick by Flynn puts the Trojans at the 36. That's where they will be on offense when we get back. Troy leading Georgia Southern 28-10 as the Trojans go back on offense at the 36-yard line. They have only seven minutes and 12 seconds time of possession in this game, yet they lead by 18 points. Jamarius Henderson comes to the short side, gets run out of bounds by Freeman at the 42-yard line. He picks up six on the play. Henderson, two carries for 71 yards, 59 of those coming on a touchdown run in that first half. That was his third carry of the day right there. And again, the uh, Trojans have elected not to use uh, Jordan Chun today. Chun, we were told, would play, but limited action. But with the lead and the weather, they have not used him, and I don't think they will as Silvers goes down. Penetration there on defense by Deshaun Cooper, the fourth-year junior line uh, defensive end for the Eagles. And it's going to bring up a third down and three, and it starts raining again. And a nice stop on the last one. They got a chance here in third and three to see if they can get another stop. I'm talking about the Georgia Southern defense here and played a little better with those quick scores that they gave up in the first half. But they have played a little bit better as this game's gone on. Trojans are three of six on their third downs here today. 17th all-time meeting between these two rivals. Trojans have not beaten the Eagles since they became Sunbelt rivals three years ago. That's a shovel pass that goes to Eford, and Eford going to pick up the first down as Murray knocks him down at the 49-yard line, but that'll move the, uh, move the sticks on what technically was a pass to Eford. Troy does a good job blocking on the flanks right here, giving Eford an opportunity. Look at Josh Anderson block for him. Just a beautiful block. It's nice to see your running backs that will return the favor to those receivers and block for them when they carry the football. So first and 10, ball at the 49-yard line. And Anderson gets swarmed under back at the 46-yard line. De La Rosa leading the charge for the Eagles defense. Really one of the first times we've seen today where Georgia Southern has, has uh, had some loss of yards to the Troy offense, and that's got – Great penetration by De La Rosa right there and gets them in a second and 12. Just haven't had many opportunities on defense this year to do that. Nice job by the inside linebacker. Came in with 32 tackles on the season. That led the linebacking court. Indeed, that was their first tackle for loss today. Heavy pressure. Silver steps up to avoid it and throws complete downfield at the 37-yard line to John Johnson. Well, John Johnson's done the cycle. He's the one that threw the touchdown pass earlier in the game. Now he makes a nice catch on a crossing route right here. So he's going from quarterback back to receiver again. And a good job by Silvers to step up in the packet, pocket rather to avoid the rush and find himself a little spot to throw the ball. Absolutely. That's poison. An experienced quarterback that's been playing around here a long time. First and 10 from the 37. That's Davis in motion. Silvers throws a screen pass into the ground. Nothing had developed. Anderson, I'm thinking, was the intended target there. And now it's going to be second down. Good job, uh, Brandon. Again, if you cannot run with a screen, you cannot throw the ball away across the line of scrimmage because then it would be lineman downfield. The only thing you can do when a screen is not there, throw it at the feet of the guy that you're trying to throw it to. It's exactly what Brandon Silvers did right there. Stadium is pretty empty, and uh, Troy has done a very good job of attendance this year. They were averaging 27,000 per game, which is an all-time attendance mark until today. The weather has just really been nasty, and a lot of people who came have already gone. Henderson not going anywhere. Hunt is there to drive him backwards with help from Tamarcio Reese, and it's going to be third down. 
And, Matt, that was the run that they ran for a long run that Josh Anderson ran around the corner on the first play of the game. So this defense is playing better as the game has gone on a little bit. We've got an injury with one of the defensive backs. So third down and 10 coming up. But first, they tend to an eagle at the 31-yard uh, line. And we'll take a timeout as they tend to Sean Freeman, who's down on the deck. Coach, did you ever see the movie about the penguins in Antarctica, how they huddle up together to uh, uh, endure the bitter winter? The, the Troy players look like penguins <laughs> on the sideline. They are huddled up tight together trying to keep and conserve their body heat right now. They're not used to that cold <laughs> weather in Troy, Alabama. It's a 50-degree day. It's been a while it's, since it's been this cold, probably since back in the winter time. This is the first cold day of the football season here in the southeast as it's currently 50 degrees, and, of course, a driving rain has made it feel even colder here for the football players and the fans who've been out in the elements today. Well, and the Eagles of Georgia Southern, same thing. They're used to the warm weather in South Georgia, and, and uh, so it's been cold. And the, the, the band's hung in there, though. You have to give them credit. The, the band has stayed right here and playing away and being tough, mentally tough bunch. I don't think they have the option of going home. It's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> they have to. Probably fourth down and true. 10. The Trojans going for it here on fourth and 10. Silvers guns it down the field. That's a first down at the 18-yard line on fourth and 10. They convert on the pass to Willis. I think Brandon's played well today. And now, again, he's got good time to throw. You give a quarterback that much time, good things can happen. Just a little, little skinny post right there and, and very nice. Anderson batters his way for five yards down to the 11-yard line after Willis had picked up his second catch of the day. What a big third down conversion and a, and a big decision by Coach Brown to go for it on, his, on their 40-yard line. Anderson gets hit by De La Rosa in the backfield, and Anderson is able to struggle back to the line of scrimmage, and De La Rosa is slow to get up, and he looks like he's hurt. Let me tell you, when you get down in front of the 5'11", 250-pound Josh Anderson, if his thigh or knee hits you in the shoulder or any part of your body, you're going to feel it. You know, when we, when we played football, when I was at the young age, coaches always says those big guys hit them low. I'm not sure that's a guy I'd want to hit, hit low right there. Yeah, he didn't hit him low. He hit him, in the, hit him in the waist, and it still shook him up. Oh, he's so big and strong, and he's just uh, – you tackle him all day long, it wears on you as the game goes on. Del Rose has had a nice game. He's had some nice tackles. But that's a big man to take down. Got his uh, Penn State neck roll on. <laughs> that's old school linebacker right there, right? He sure does. You don't see many of the neck rolls anymore. Third down and three. I call it the Penn State neck roll because, <laughs> I mean, I just remember all the Penn State linebackers used to wear them. Couldn't play linebacker Penn State if you didn't have a neck roll. Short yardage situation, Silvers. Rolling, throwing to the end zone, and beyond the intended target, Emmanuel Thompson, and now it's going to be fourth down. Deshaun Cooper was bringing pressure on Silvers, and let's see if they try a field goal here. They've turned the place-kicking duties over to the young man who started the season primarily as only their punter, but they've had so many struggles in that area. Sumter's on to try his third attempt of the season. He was two for two with a 21 and a 27 yarder against Georgia State last week. This is a 28 yarder, and this one is going to be good. So, Tyler Sumter's now three for three on the season, and it's 31 to 10. So that's, I would say it's been a win for Georgia Southern. I know they're not looking for moral victories. They're looking for real live victories. And you can put a, a mark in that W column, but they, uh, they held them to three right there. They've held them to three in this quarter after surrendering 14 points in each of the first and the second. I think their defense has improved from the first half to the, through this third quarter. Check one Line two. of scrimmage has, has been controlled much better by the Eagles on the defensive side. 
And uh, and but now the offense has not been able to get going at all. And again, their their Achilles heel has just been getting themselves in those second and third and long. Thing that I've been impressed with though, Matt, I think they're hanging in there. They're playing hard. You don't you don't see a lot of dropping heads and moping around on the Georgia Southern sideline. I think the Eagles have hung in there. I think Chad's gotten them playing hard today, and I know he wants to see them finish this game out. And then, honestly, if they can just get a score, they're still hanging around. But they've got to have a drive. They need a long drive. That's what this style of offense does is you need one of those long 80-yard drives with about 15, 20 plays in it. Campbell going to bring it out from the one-yard line, bounces into his own man, going to get dropped at the 20-yard line. And that's where the Eagles will go on offense. I want to say just just for a moment, I wish the best to Tyson Summers. I think he's a fine man. I think he's a good coach. He stepped into a tough situation, and they they just couldn't find a way to win this year. And they still might not find a way to win this year. They got a very young team. They got a long way to go. But uh, my best to him and his family. And I, you know, he'll be back on his feet and coaching again sometime soon. Oh, he's an outstanding coach, and he will. He'll be fine. It's so hard. People just don't understand what that does to a family. And and uh, Tyson, uh, it's awful hard on everybody to let you coach go at midseason. And there's reasons for it, and I'm not going to get into that, good or bad, but it's a decision that was made. And and now Georgia Southern Eagles have just got to make the best of it they can. But, yes, sir, I agree with you. Let's all wish Tyson the best. Classy man and a good football coach. Ramsby on the carry with Cato Brown back in there at quarterback, and we're down to 80 seconds to play here in the third quarter. As for uh, Chad Lunsford and his future, it's an interim job for right now. He's been told that, uh, you know, this is kind of a resume situation for him. If they do well, he'll be considered for the job. And I really think he is he is taking it that way, and he's really working hard and wants to see what he can do with this football team if he can start winning games as this, as this year goes on. This is a tough start for him come on the road and have to play the Trojans of Troy. Going under center here, they hand off to Ramsby, and Ramsby's going to pick up the first down at the 31. So barring a big comeback here in the final 15 minutes plus, the Eagles will be 0-7 when they host their rivals, the Georgia State Panthers, next Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN3. Might be the final play of this third quarter. Brown trying to get to the edge. That's another tackle for loss. Just could not turn the corner. And Zoe Bridges, the defensive end, drops him for a loss. That's tackle for loss number eight for this Troy defense today. Oh. And eight against this style of offense is eight times you put them in long yardage situations. And Cato can't just you, when you when you don't have a play hit the ground. Don't keep That's going backwards and sideways. It it just it puts you in a tough situation. And that will finish the third quarter. We'll head to the fourth. The final 15 minutes. Troy, 31-10, and 15 minutes away from victory number six. Start of the fourth quarter here in Troy. The Trojans leading Georgia Southern 31-10. to I'm Matt Stewart along with Coach Watson Brown. Thanks for joining us. It's going to be a big crowd here today for homecoming day, but the nasty weather, 50 degrees and a driving rain, has sent most of the folks home. Cato Brown in there, quarterback. As we start this fourth quarter, he's scrambling around, and he's going to get dropped at the 27-yard line. Eventually got chased down by Folsom, the linebacker. Going to bring up third down and long. Cato does a good job here, but that shows you the quickness of the Troy defense. Cato's about to get loose, but the pursuit, the angles, good tackling. Another pile of shirts get around him as they're getting him on the ground. That's why you don't give up a lot of big plays when you have team speed like that. Fifth tackle of the day for Folsom. This is the number one rated defense in the Sun Belt Conference. This is not a surprise. Troy has been doing this all season long. On third down, uh, Brown going to take it and run. Got a long way to go and not going to get there as he gets dropped at the 34-yard line. Well short of the first down, Baron Poole making the tackle for the Trojans, and it's going to be fourth down. 
Yeah, that's the that's the under, untold story of this Troy team this year. We always talk about offense in Troy because of Neil Brown and his background as one of the great young minds, offensive minds in college football. But Vic Coning and the job they've done, they are number one in scoring defense in the conference, number one in rushing defense, number one in total defense, number five in passing defense. Troy has a stout defensive unit. Fair catch called for and made by Rookard at the 27-yard line. That's where the Trojans will be on offense when we get back. Vic Coning in there behind all those helmets <laughs> doing his job as the defensive coordinator of the Troy Trojans. New quarterback now in there for the Trojans, the backup Caleb Barker getting the snaps early in this fourth quarter as he picks up about a yard or two on the play. Barker, the sophomore out of Decatur, Alabama, Priceville High School getting some run here in the fourth. Got to develop one. Brandon's a senior, and they're going to have to – who's going to be their next guy here? And it's a good time to get some reps with the young guys and young quarterback and – and uh, good of Neil to put him in. Vic Coning been around a long time, Matt. He's a fantastic yep. defensive coordinator. I think Neil's very lucky to have him here. Gosh, I've been going against Nick as uh, Vic is a coach myself for for many, many years. Even back in the '80s, he was at Memphis when I was at Vanderbilt. Outstanding football coach. And uh, they're, the defense is up there at the top of all those stats for a reason. They've, they've got a good leader that uh, gets them in the right places and gets them to play hard and makes them tough, be good tacklers. Vic does a great job. Third down coming up for the Trojans after the run by Barker. They're four for nine on their third down. Coning, it's always, uh, it's always fun to talk to Vic because no matter how good their defense is, he is always stressed out, and he's never satisfied with the way the guys are playing. And hard to get a compliment out of him, but there's no doubt about it. He has put together an incredibly stout defense here for Troy to complement what is usually a pretty good offense. There's Vic Conan walking the sidelines right now. It was funny when we were talking to him this week, and they were coming off a performance where they had shut down a pretty good Georgia State offense and won 34 to 10. He said, I don't remember being this stressed out about games. When you know you got to play perfect, you stress more. And I started laughing at him because I just know Vic so well when we were talking. And you can see still stress in his face right now. And they're up, they're, they're up 31 to 10 right now, but they're still stressed. That's, that's why he's good at what he does. Barker going up top, and it is broken up. Douglas could not. Hold on to it. Brinson's one of the best corners in the league. Denied him the pass, and it's going to be third down. And great patience by Brinson here. The ball was going to be caught. He timed it well. Watch when it hit his hands, and we'll watch this and see him knock it out of his hands with his, with his right hand, I think, as this comes down right here, and he just pulls those arms down. You can't play it any better. You either run with him and turn back, see the ball yourself, try to intercept it, or you run along, and when he sticks those hands up, pull those arms down as he tries to catch the ball. I think Great I, job by Brinson. Yeah, I think I said it was third down. It's actually second down now, second down and 10 from the 42. They had picked up a first down on the prior play. Barker going to run again, and De La Rosa wraps him up and drops him at the 47 with help from Bradley on the play. Actually, Deshaun Cooper, not Bradley, 41 instead of 11, and it's going to be third down. Third down and five coming up. Short week coming up for Troy, and Vic Coney was already stressed out about that <laughs> in that this will be, as he points out, the third straight week in which they've gone against a very different offense, Georgia State, then Georgia Southern, and now Idaho, and their fine quarterback Matt Linehan coming to town this week. And he is right when you when you have to go a full week against this triple option stuff and uh, have to prepare for it. It's a complete different offense, and then you go back to more conventional offenses with Idaho and Linehan, the quarterback. I've had Idaho this year myself, and Matt Linehan's a really good player. So he'll go back to defending a all-out pass quarterback and a good running game with Idaho in just a few days. So it's good to get some rest with some of these guys. I think that's probably what they're trying to do with such a short week 
stay fresh and get ready for the next one. They've got this one under control. Vandals have a 14-0 lead on ULM in the second quarter. Also, App State struggling with UMass. UMass, the team that beat Georgia Southern so badly last week, 55-20. Flags out before they can kick. UMass is beating App State right now, 17-14. That's in the third quarter up in uh, Amherst, Building Massachusetts. Offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. I watched UMass a little bit against Tennessee early in the year. They've well. got some good players. Yeah. They've got some good players. And, and – and uh, I, I know that uh, uh, Georgia, Georgia Southern played that bunch last week. They're very good on offense. And uh, uh, so it's UMass, UMass is a good team. It's, it, any loss is not good, but UMass may be a little better than maybe some of the Georgia Southern fans think. Line drive kick from Sumter. Going to be fielded by Campbell on the hop. Campbell dances and goes down at the 15-yard line, and that's where the Eagles go back on offense. And we'll take a timeout with nine timeout. minutes and 25 seconds to play. Eagles go on offense. Troy comes out on defense when we get back. Here's the end of that punt, and on review, you will see that the ball actually hits Terrence Dunlap. At the 26-yard line, it's actually looked, it kicked off of his foot. So the Eagles, there was a flag dropped on the play. The Eagles have the option of taking the return, which they're not going to take because they got dropped at the 15. And they're going to take it. They actually spotted at the 23 when it looked like it hit him at the 26 or 27. So, But either way, it's better for the Eagles than the, where they did have it. So that's why they have the ball at the 23 to start this possession. Works back in there at quarterback, and Fields gets the handoff and nothing doing for him. His 10th carry of the game, that'll give him 10 carries for 56 yards, but 38 of them came on one carry back in the first half. You know, Matt, that's why I'd always tell a, re a returner, if you see the ball hit the guy and you know the official saw it, go ahead and pick it up and run with it at that point because he could even fumble it, and it would still be their decision choice to take it where they want to take it. So, um, and that was a heads-up play by the fifth-year senior, uh, Miles Campbell, who's already graduated. A fine student, Sun Belt academic honor roll student, as Ramsby runs it up to the 39 yard line where he's tackled by Tyus. But Miles Campbell, uh, Sun Belt all academic team every year. He graduated in May with a degree in finance. Uh, Good Works team nominee, went on spring break to Nicaragua with Athletes in Action. Just an all around good kid. He, and it, he is now work with Lunsford being an interim. He's worked with five different head coaches since he's been there at Statesboro, counting the interims as well. And when you have that much change, it's it's really hard to have a strong team after five years of that. And they've just got to build this thing back. Georgia Southern is a fantastic football program with unbelievable traditions. Uh, they'll, they'll get it going again and decide what they want to do with their program, but they've got to get some stability, Matt. You can't keep Having yep. by either the coach leaving or firing the coach, right. you cannot ever get. I don't care how strong your program is. Ask the University of Tennessee. Yep. When you have that much change, it's just so hard to have any consistency at all. Wirtz picks up the first down at the 35. Well, Jeff Monken had been their head coach through 2013, and he left for Army. Willie Fritz came in in 2014, led them to a Sun Belt championship, but left after two seasons for a job at Tulane. Pitch goes to Garrett, Monteo Garrett, up to the 44-yard line, about a yard short of the first down for Garrett, the junior playing here in his home state. Of, he's from Talladega, Alabama, Mumford High School. Nice execution. When they execute their stuff and they get the ball pitched on the flanks here, and Nice run by Fields. They, they look nice. And, again, when they can stay in the chains, this is not a bad offensive football team. Here they've got second and one. Ball fumbled by Wirtz. He picks it up. Heaves it downfield. Has Campbell streaking open, the young man we were talking about just a moment ago, and he can't run under it. And now it's going to be third down and one. And Wirtz might have been hammered at the end of that play. He had to stand in there late. Of course, dropping the ball on the ground didn't help. Well, I think this is a nice call, second and one. Go for a bomb right here, take your shot. But he drops the ball, and we talked about earlier in the game, 
passing the football is spacing and timing and protecting the quarterback. And when he dropped the ball, he lost his timing and just couldn't get the ball to his receiver. Fields picks up the first down and then a little bit more than that as he cuts across the 50 and down to the 47-yard line. Flakes making the tackle for the Trojans, but that'll move the stick for Georgia Southern as we're down to six and a half minutes to play. Fields now with 11 carries and 65 yards on the day. Fields runs to the outside this time. Gets bumped out of bounds by Kevin Nixon, their freshman linebacker. Uh, Trojans are very young in the linebacking core outside of Sam Levy, who's their fifth-year senior. You have Folsom, who's a sophomore, Wisenhunt, who's a freshman, A.J. Smiley, redshirt sophomore, Nixon, who just bumped uh, Fields out of bounds as a freshman. They tried really hard to bring in a veteran at the linebacking core through junior college recruiting this past uh, recruiting cycle and just could not get a guy. They had some guys lined up, and they lost all of them to Power 5 conferences the last week of recruiting. So they got stuck with some youngsters in the linebacking core this year. You know, I've been in some of those schools myself as a head coach, and that is so hard. You go for the better player, and 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 then you don't get him, and then all of a sudden you're, you don't have even the next best guy. You go for the next best guy, you're not going after the best guy you can get. Recruiting's tough, and especially on on this level, the uh, and I think Troy has done a really good job uh, with talent. They're a very talented bunch, really everywhere. I think their defense is very talented and, and some, got some good offensive guys. I think Neil's done a really good job. Recruiting a lot on this level is, is picking the talent, knowing the right guys to pick because you're not getting the five-star guy. Yep. And so you got to do a good job and then know you can develop that guy. By the time he's a sophomore, junior, he's a really good football player. I think Troy's done a really good job with that. Fields picked up the first down with that carry, so a fresh set of downs for the Eagles at the Troy 37. Wirtz going to run it. Fields opened up for him, and he's down to the 17-yard line in a first down. Good job by Wirtz. Dropped back like he was going to pass. Actually started out looking like he'd run an option, then kind of took a drop like he was going to pass, and then he just took off running. And you, you just did the analyst part. It's fake an option, drop back, throw the ball. He sees space to run, takes off with it. These two quarterbacks are like tailbacks when they take off with the ball. Fields up the middle, lucky making the tackle at the 14-yard line as Fields picks up three more yards, 15 carries, 78 yards rushing for Wesley Fields today. Well, Coach Lunsford, it's good to see. He, I know he's proud to see a nice drive right here. Hang in there. We're not going to win the football game, but we're staying it tough and we're playing hard. Gain a little confidence as we go. You look for little things when you're 0-6, and you just hunt little things to get you better. And I know that's what Chad's doing right now. 11th play of the drive right there. That was the freshman, Justin Wisenhunt, making the tackle. And now it's going to be third down. I would think that he would not kick a field goal here, so he's probably telling his coordinator, go ahead and take both these downs to try to make the first down. And, uh, but this has been a nice drive because they haven't put themselves in any of those second and third and long situations. Wirtz under center. Long toss goes to Garrett. Garrett cuts up and gets the first down down to the five-yard line. Nice piece of running there by Monteo, Monteo Garrett to pick up the first down. Good to see Monteo get a carry, too. He's, one of the, he's the primary blocker on a lot of these outside runs. He gets a few carries here and there. And, uh, but that's a tough position to play when you're blocking two out of three, three out of four plays on these running plays. First and goal from the five-yard line. Fields gets two tough yards down to the three. And some pushing and shoving going on there in the pile right now. App has tied up UMass at 17. That's still with about five minutes to play in the third quarter in that one. Two and a half minutes on the clock here in Troy, Alabama. Trojans going to pick up their sixth win of the season. Will the Eagles get another touchdown today? That's about one of the few remaining questions we have. Words under center again. Toss, long toss goes to Fields, and he's going to get in for the score. Wesley Fields takes it in from three yards out. 
And that makes it 31 16. As we said, one of the plays that the triple option teams run when they're under the center is this kind of misdirection sweep. Blocked well. They've really run this play well all day long today. And get a nice score. That was a really nice drive. It tells you the kids are still playing hard for Chad and Coach Lunsford. And, and I'm really proud to see that. And, and anything, just get some positiveness to get back on that bus and head back home. And let's get back home and try to win a game. Bass hits the upright. That's his first PAT miss of the season. So 31-16, the score with two minutes and 18 seconds to play here in Troy. Two eighteen to play. Matt Stewart along with Coach Watson Brown on a rainy, cold day. The Eagles going to line up here and try an onside kick after scoring their second touchdown of the day on the three-yard run by Wesley Fields. Bass kicks it. And it's going to bounce out of bounds. They had a shot at it. It bounced high, which is what you want to get. But Fortune was trying to kind of bat at it and knock it back towards the field and couldn't do it. And the ball goes out of bounds. That means it'll be Troy's ball. Yeah, high bounce, but too hard. Yeah. There's a line drive, and the ball just got out of bounds before the outside guy could get to it. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team number 16. The five-yard penalty will be enforced from where it went out of bounds. First and 10, Troy. So the Trojans will take over at the 49-yard line, it appears. Brandon Silver's long since out of this ball game. He finished 9 of 18 passing for 102 and a touchdown. A really strange day in that the Trojans never really had the ball a whole lot. <laughs> they have less than 13 minutes time of possession in this game. Yet they're going to win by two scores, it appears. Barker going to run it up the middle. And Jordan Chun didn't play today either. Chun, of course, uh, has a laceration on his leg. Time out. Troy. Georgia Southern. And First Georgia Southern time brings out. a timeout here. 30 second timeout. So Georgia Southern playing it like they still have a shot, which is the thing you want to do. And the Eagles call a timeout. But uh, yeah, the, they've got the short week coming up. They've got Idaho in here on national television on Thursday night. So my guess is we'll see Chun definitely on Thursday night. I think he'll be ready to go Thursday night. I think that uh, they're probably going to get him a little today knowing Thursday night's really when he was going to be back. Coach, in his last full game, he ran for 191 against LSU. <laughs> and that's proved to be since that game. They've, LSU's been pretty good on defense, so that's it shows you what this bunch is capable of. Idaho is 21-7 on ULM right now with five and a half minutes to play until halftime in Moscow, Idaho. Been to Moscow, enjoyed it. Pretty part of the country. The Kibbe Dome. Been to the Kibbe Dome. Second down, and Barker going to keep it on the ground and get close to a first down, maybe be a little bit short at the 34 and a half. Timeout, Georgia Southern. Second charge timeout, a 30-second timeout. So that stops the clock with two minutes. Eagles would like to get their hands on the ball one more time. They'll head back to Statesboro. 0-7 with Georgia State coming to town next week. And that game will be a 3 o'clock Eastern kick on ESPN3 from Paulson Stadium. The Panthers have played well. They lost to Troy last week, but the Panthers have now won four of their last five ever since being beaten badly by Penn State. Yep, and losing their opener to TSU. Yeah, to Tennessee uh, State, Tennessee and then they State lost and, to Penn State. And yeah. Things look dismal, and they've gone 4-1 and one ever since with the only loss coming to Troy last week at home. Yeah, and that, so they only have one loss in the conference, so they're still hanging around, and uh, and they could be a factor. Um, I think they play App State uh, later out. on, so yes. they, they could be a First factor in this race. And a a timeout called timeout. by Troy on a third down and short. With this win, the Trojans will improve to 3-1 and one in the conference, and they'll pull back into a third-place tie with Georgia State in the standings. Of course, Troy has the tiebreaker on Georgia State since they beat them last week. Eagles will drop to 0-3.
And Neil Brown was extremely disappointed in his team after they came out flat after beating LSU. Nationally televised game here in the stadium. And, and they had their rivals, South Alabama, beat them 19-8. to And he was really upset with his team, more so that he didn't see the hunger from his team that he was wanting to see. And I think the last couple of weeks he, he can look back and reflect and say, you know what, this team has played hungry. This team has played like they want to win and be a really good team in this conference. And a good football team learns from those kind of situations. You don't. Disconcerting signals, defense number 90. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Boy, you don't see that call very often. And when, when a referee or umpire makes that call, it really did happen. And what that means is you're calling out the signals of the offense, making the offense jump off sides. That's what that is. And that was Darius Sapp who was whistled for that penalty, and that should, that'll put a lid on this thing. We'll see if the uh, Trojans just start taking a knee here because uh, the Eagles are down to a, one timeout remaining, so they can't do anything with it at this point. Very rare that opportunity that they would get the ball back unless the Trojans cough it up. That was B.J. Smith on the run. Timeout. Georgia Southern. And the Eagles Third use their last timeout time anyway. The <laughs> it's a 30-second timeout. You know, I think this has been done for a reason. You know exactly what they're doing, too. I mean, he's just trying to let his kids know we're not quitting. Yep. We're going to keep fighting this thing. We're going to fight it till it's over. That's the way. That's the pride of this program and the tradition of this program. We may be 0-6, but we're not going to quit this fight. And that can carry into next week. That's exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to make a mindset as they get ready for their next opponent. And uh, there are some positives they can leave with today. I, I do feel for these kids. It's tough. It's tough to have that many coaching change, then lose your coach in midseason. Proud of Chad and Lundstrom, and just uh, he's doing everything he can to try to keep this thing going and get some wins out of this pro, out well, of this year. Yeah, for Chad Lunsford, his first ever head coaching assignment came today. Had never been a head coach prior to this. Second down, Barker going to run it, and Barker around the edge and inside the 10, and De La Rosa gets him on the ground at the three and a half. Be very surprised if uh, Neil doesn't take a knee right here now. We'll see. Maybe not. Well, they've never beaten Georgia Southern since he's been here. In fact, uh, the Eagles have beaten them badly um, in two of the three meetings as conference rivals. And last year, remember, the Georgia Southern, that's the last game that Georgia Southern won was last year uh, against this Trojans team. B.J. Smith trying to get in, and he does for the touchdown. B.J. Smith takes it in, and it is now 37-16. to 16. First rushing touchdown of the season for the sophomore out of Millbrook, Alabama. Just a sweep around the corner. Got re everybody reaches to the outside. Let the back keeps widening it, widening it. A little holding right there. A little holding on the corner a little bit right there that they got away with, but a nice score. Finish up the game. Sumter going to come on for the PAT. And he pumps it through to make it 38-16. So for Troy, a little redemption. It was a year ago that this Georgia Southern team beat them 28-24 in Statesboro and denied them a share of the conference championship. And, of course, when Georgia Southern came in here two years ago, they beat them 45-10. So this is a first for Troy as members of the Sun Belt Conference, along with Georgia Southern, a victory over the rival Eagles. No, a little payback. I think they've got to have that a little bit in their minds because that was a that was a tough loss for Neil Brown and the Trojans last year. Uh, just took a conference championship away from them. Yeah. So don't think that wasn't still in the back of those minds just a little bit. And this is this is a strong rival anyway, Matt. They, these two teams always get ready to play each other. And it's hard to believe that was the last victory for this Eagles program. December of 2016 and their 28-24 victory over Troy and as they head into November this week they'll still be without a victory here in 2017. K 
Campbell going to come up to the 12-yard line to return it. And he's going to go down at the 20. And that's where the Eagles will go on offense with 71 seconds left in this one. So Troy is going to end up winning by 22 points unless the Eagles can score late here. But anyway, they're going to end up winning with just 16 minutes and 13 seconds time of possession. <laughs> Fewer first downs than the Eagles. Only 50 plays run to Georgia Southern's 70. Weird football game. A lot of times, though, this style of offense will have a lot more plays. And Wirtz fires complete to Glenn, who gets dropped at the 27-yard line. Not a timeout, so they'll have to try to move fast now because they used them all on that last drive. But, Matt, that does happen a lot of times with these ball control offenses. you got a lot of, a lot of plays, maybe a lot of yards, but all of a sudden uh, you don't win the game. Big plays with a difference today. And a lot of big plays by their defense, as a matter of fact. It's Wirtz back to pass again, dancing around back there, firing downfield. And it's caught by Henry at the 41-yard line. Wirtz's pass is complete to number 87. So Wirtz, who had not had a pass completion the entire day, has completed two here on this possession as the clock winds down to 29 seconds, and it's still running. And Malik Henry is one of those guys that, they, that the Eagles think is a very talented young man. They just need to find a way to get him going. A little passing game outside would really help this running game as the year goes on. Clock running down to 14 seconds, and Wirt's going to take off and run. He's across the 30, slides down at the 25 and a half. That'll stop the clock for them to move the sticks with seven seconds. If they run up to the line of scrimmage and spike it, they'll have a chance to run one more play. And a man down for Troy, so that bails them out a little bit right there as far as having to spike the ball. Well, you sure don't want to get a, a, a very important player or any player hurt. Seven seconds to go in the game. Got a game on Thursday night coming up. Right. Let's hope and pray the young man's not hurt too bad. And some people might be wondering, you know, why is Georgia Southern bothering? Well, this is important for them. They're, gonna, they're about to be 0-7, and this at least gives them an opportunity in live game action to execute a, a two-minute offense that – they rarely get a chance to employ. And I agree with you. I think, in, and I know the fans in Statesboro just want to see the triple option with the quarterback under center, and I get it. That's your history. That's your legacy. That's where you've had your championships. The ruling is the offense made a first down. Because of the injury in the first down, there is no option for a 10-second runoff. The clock will start on the ready for play. Ultimately, you do have to develop a passing game. Yes, you do. you got to have some kind of a passing game. I think he's trying to develop a passing game here, and I also think he's, again, telling his kids, we're, going, we're playing till the last play of the game, yeah. till that horn blows. I want to see you guys keep your heads up and keep fighting. Because that's the first thing you don't want your kids to do when you're on a losing string. Don't quit. Just no. keep playing hard each week. Clock moving again. Wirtz not having to spike it here. This might be the final play of the game. Wirtz scrambling around. It will be. The fireworks go off. He throws downfield incomplete, and that will do it. The Troy Trojans are bowl eligible for a second consecutive season as they defeat the Georgia Southern Eagles by a final score of 38 to 16. The Trojans now 6 and 2, 3 and 1 in the conference. The Eagles drop to 0 and 7 and 0 and 3 in the Sun Belt. Big defensive day for the Trojans on defense as they come up with nine tackles for loss and kept the Eagles playing behind the chains most of the day. 38-16, the final. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live on the ESPN app or to watch this entire game on replay as well as our other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. And now for Coach Watson Brown and the entire ESPN crew, I'm Matt Stewart. So long from Troy, where the Trojans beat Georgia Southern 38-16. This has been a presentation of ESPN.